Hello, hello and welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel, PharmaVan. In today's video, I will be discussing about why three batches are required for process validation. So in injectable manufacturing, we usually perform three process validation batches, but many times the question is being asked that why three, why not two, why not five? So I will try to answer that question in here. So let's first go by the guidance document. So European Union Annex 1, the revised EU Annex 1, even in the older versions, it has mentioned that it is usual to have three process validation batches before the product is commercially marketed. Three batches are required to ensure that the results are consistent and reproducible. So product is meeting the acceptance criteria consistently and reproducibly. So let's understand, if you have one successful process validation batch, then it can be a chance that you can got. If you have two, then again, it's a, it's a matter of chance that, okay, your two batches are meeting the criteria. But you cannot establish a data point or trend based on the two batches. When you perform third batch, you have three data points to compare. And it eliminates the possibility of passing by chance or passing by fluke it it ensures or it indicates that yes process has certain consistency consistency and reproducibility so that your your process is producing the product meeting the required acceptance criteria every time now in the process validation batch in within the batch itself, as we know, we are performing multiple samples from various stages such as manufacturing, filtration and filling. So all the results should be in sync with each other within batch and between batch. What does it mean? For example, your one sample, if your assay limit is 95% to 100% and if your assay is coming as a 97% in one sample, 99% in another sample and 101 in next sample, then it does not mean that process is well capable or process is reproducible enough because there are a lot of variation within batch. Same way, if the results are not consistent between the batches, for example, your first batch has a SA limits around SA values around 99%, your second batch is getting around 102%, and your third batch is getting around 97%, then of course it is between 95% to 105%, but your results are not consistent between batches. So this is all the, also the case where we need a robust process validation and before that robust manufacturing process or robust process which produces the product within the desired acceptance criteria but within certain acceptable range so that we can say that process is not going here and there, results are not going absolutely here and there when we are manufacturing a batch with, with a certain defined manufacturing process. So this is EU NX1 and certain explanation of how intra-batch and intra-batch variation has to be understood. Now coming to the FDA's process validation guide, it, it asks for the process design, process qualification and continued process verification. So process design is basically designing the manufacturing process or more of research and development work, more of product development work, more of formulation development work. But when it comes to process qualification, FDA guidance doesn't define specifically three batches, but yes, it's usual practice and it is accepted in regulatory audits by FDA having the three batches as a process validation. But what's the difference then? So what the process qualification really means, it, it is mean that if you are not confident or if you are not aware of the process very well, if, if it is a very complex process and you are going to perform first time, then you may have to go for more than three batches. Of course, and if you know the processes, you if you know the processes well, and if you have manufactured similar batches in your facility earlier, then 
if you are confident about the process about the materials about the solubility profile about the temperature profile about the product characteristic then with three batches you can conclude your process validation but if you are not very sure then you may want to go for more than three batches to ensure that you are confident enough that to say that my process is validated so hope this small video helps you understand why three batches or why more than three batches can also be required so two main guidelines unx1 and fds guidance on process validation helps to understand this topic better thank you thank you very much for watching my full video if you like you can subscribe to my channel pharma and thanks thanks a lot